Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, it's nine o'clock in in Vancouver, and uh, we are going to get started. Welcome and thank you for joining today's Asenko Connect webinar. Uh, this webinar series is one way that we at Asenko are uh, working to connect with our clients during COVID uh, to share and provide knowledge and thought leadership that we that uh, we think will be will bring value to you and we really appreciate you joining us today as we know your time is very valuable today's topic is public consultation in times of physical distancing and uh, and today this will be run by by the environmental arm of Asenco in Canada uh, we are part of, of Hamera my name is Scott Weston I am your moderator uh, my role is uh, Vice President of Business Development at Hamera, and that uh, gives me the, the the pleasure of collaborating with uh, with today's presenters and and our clients across across Canada. The presentation is going to be delivered by by two of our, our of our top consultants. Uh, Norma Powell is Senior Project Manager at Hamera, um, and her background is in wildlife biology and environmental assessment. Norma's worked on regulatory approvals and permits for for a wide range of sectors, including uh, hydroelectric, wind farms, transmission and distribution lines, marine infrastructure, oil and gas, and highways. Uh, her role at Hamera is primarily uh, project management, um, and she is also our director of environmental assessment. Uh, joining Norma will be Nick Corpini. Nick is our business leader for, for our geomatics line of business, um, and he has a strong background in uh, background technical expertise in in geomatics with uh, 20 plus years of experience in in mining uh, and other natural resource development and as i learned i learned uh, this week as i was hunting around our office for a, for a mouse i've learned that nick is left-handed and his mouse is of no use to me mm -hmm. <laughs> um, the webinar today is going to be recorded and the recording will be posted on, on Asenko's website and uh, on LinkedIn and other social media channels. So um, we encourage you to, uh, to go find that and to, and to share it with your colleagues. As I said, I'm, I'm the moderator. I will shortly turn it over to Norma and Nick, um, but uh, we, we encourage you to, to engage with us. And the, the way that we are able to do that today is via the, is via the, the Q and A forum. Uh, you'll find that on the right side of your screen. And if you don't see that right now, um, if you scroll towards the bottom, you'll you'll get a, a menu bar will, will pop up and you'll, you'll be able to see an icon for the Q&A. Please type your questions in there uh, during during the, the presentation uh, or after. And I will I will find those questions, collate them, and I will moderate the, the Q&A session once Norma and Nick are finished. So please, please enter the, the questions as that's our that is our format of, of being able to engage with you this morning. So um, public consultation in a time of social distancing, um, really what we're, we're talking about here is a platform uh, that, that we've developed at, at, at Hemera for engaging with, with our stakeholders. And, and really this is much more, this is a platform that's much more than, um, than just public consultation. Uh, what, what we have, what you're gonna see today is a, is a, a digital solution that Hemera has developed to engage uh, all stakeholders in a project. Um, and it's a platform that, that bridges um, complex data and complex ideas um, and brings them closer to, to, to our client stakeholders in a way that, uh, that really we've all become familiar with um, and, and has become the Norman Society in a digital platform. Uh, and it's much more effective than the traditional way of communicating uh, complex ideas, which is stacks and stacks of paper. So you're in for a treat. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to, to Norma to start us off. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, uh, sound check, I, um, Scott, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can, loud and clear. Okay. So uh, thank you for the introduction. Um, I'll speak to the details of public consultation in, in times of physical distancing. I think our challenge overall very broadly is, is getting to the other side of this pandemic. Um, but what we'll speak to today is um, the public consultation aspect of it 
um, with these physical distancing restrictions? The answer, uh, as I see it, is technology and an approach I'll call the digital EA, which Scott alluded to. I'll speak to why we need the digital EA during these times of physical distancing, uh, what the digital EA is, what are the opportunities it presents, and my colleague Nick will take us through a few slides on the science of where in the digital solutions. Here he'll focus on um, a bit of the technology that supports the digital EA, and we'll close with some points on the next steps, followed with uh, Q&A and discussion as Scott mentioned. Uh, next slide, please. Engagement is changing, clearly. Restrictions on travel, group gatherings, and physical distancing has meant that traditional open houses can no longer take place. We've seen this already in the EAO and um, the Federal Assessment Agency. If, and this is a profound if, if we ever return to a traditional in-person open house, it may take much longer for the public to feel comfortable participating in those open houses. Fair enough. Um, put aside this global pandemic for, for just a moment, um, and there are additional rationale points for reinventing the open house. Um, those are engaging with remote communities can be challenging, as many of the in the audience have already discovered. Engaging on projects or initiatives that are regionally or nationally scaled means multiple and quite distant communities could be interested. And travel for hosts and the public can be demanding and will generate GHG emissions uh, for the travel to and from those events. So environmental assessment engagement can change. And, and, how, and how can it change? The change comes through technology. Next slide, please. The manner in which the world creates and consumes information is profoundly changing. We propose, let's meet them there. Uh, people across all generations and income levels are, for better or worse, digitally connected. Our children swipe a screen almost instinctually. They read books on iPads, even more so as a result of library closures during the pandemic. Grandmas and grandpas are Skyping, FaceTiming, and Zooming, and even our vocabulary is changing. Because the technology in our lives has increased and will continue to do so, we are ideally primed for the new era, era of a virtual public consultation process. For the next generation, a virtual open house may simply be the new, new normal. Next slide, please. Why do we need digital EA in this realm of physical distancing and virtual open houses? It's simply time to shift away from a system that's too technical, jargon heavy, and difficult to navigate. Um, feedback like this comes back from the public all the time. Next slide, please. To a system that makes it easy for stakeholders to understand complex scientific technical language, it's time to bring the narrative to a digital platform. This will allow engagement to proceed during times of physical distancing. Um, how does the digital platform make it easier for stakeholders to understand complex ideas? The key reason is that the digital information is simply more engaging and more visually pleasing. It holds a person's attention. Uh, at times, volumes of reports are produced to support a project application um, and even more generally, Speaking, reams of documentation for any number of project and, or, and in any number of initiatives that involve relaying information to an audience, be it uh, official community, community plans, municipal changes, or, or program and policy changes. We do ourselves and the audience a favor by shifting away from the overly technical, lengthy, and flat information in hard copy or PDF reports. Next slide, please. And this is a shift to digital multimedia project documentation, or the digital EA. Familiar to many in the audience is the content of this schematic for a project's regulatory process. At several stages in the process, as you know, project stakeholder engagement would take place. During physical distancing, these engagement events were canceled, postponed, and reinvented into virtual events and virtual open houses. 
The digital EA is not a slide deck presented during a Zoom meeting. It's much more, it's a much more engaging experience. Next slide, please. The digital EA is a multimedia presentation of the project's narrative. It's supported by images, data, video, maps, graphs, 3D models, uh, time-lapse representations of models or projects development and construction, and embedded reports hyperlinked. Um, next slide, please. This is an example of the digital EA content. Uh, here we have video streaming and 3D landscape model. In the example, the turbines would be spinning and the landscape can be rotated for different views based on the person's perspective. Next slide, please. This is another example of digital EA content that we have. Um, in this one, the, there's a model of turbines spinning and the power generator from these turbines is shown on the right. The image also depicts on the bottom the timeline of construction. Specifically, the number of turbines on the landscape increases as you travel down the timeline and the power generation increases. And the user can follow up and down the timeline um, to, to see the development of the project as it moves along the timeline. These are just two examples of the content of the digital EA. Um, the content is 100% flexible. You select the information to include based on the messaging. Next slide, please. This is an example of a digital project story that we used. Uh, this described the project and the early outcomes from the environmental assessment. It was presented to the public during in-person open houses. The presentation contained information such as drone video, maps, data, and engineering drawings. It was made available to the public on iPads where the user could interact with the data and focus on the aspects that were of most interest to them. Um, if something wasn't clear, they could go back a step and further inform themselves of the project. The tabs on the left-hand side reflect the layout of the project story. Uh, let's look at tab four, for example, which is the environmental regulatory process. Next. Slide, please. These are actual iPad screenshots, not from a desktop. Um, in tab four, the user could explore at a high level what was considered in the EA. This is depicted by the graphic to the right. Uh, displayed here is the full pathway of effects for the EA, meaning everything that was considered. This pathway can be scripted um, uh, using uh, JavaScript to be interactive so one can tap on aspects that are of interest to them. When they do this, all the other information falls away and is hidden from the display. Although this was used as an, as an actual in-person open house, it is built so that the stakeholder can access the digital EA from the comfort of their own home. Thus, the digital EA story is an alternative to inform and consult with the public during physical distancing. Uh, in tab seven, in this example, this is the tab where stakeholders can finger swipe and they are directed to a page to input their comment or questions. Next slide, please. This public comment form might look something like this example. The digital EA story supports the consultation process by providing information to the stakeholder and providing an at-home avenue to consult with stakeholders by embedding the public comment form within the digital EA. Once a comment is logged in the system, it is saved to a cloud-based database where it is tracked and responded to by designated responders. These comments and responses are then warehoused for later public reporting requirements. Next slide, slide please. This is an example. <clears throat> it's a dashboard example of the comment data collected on a project. The data here was collected at open houses and also during deeper consultation with stakeholders during document reviews. Next slide, please. <clears throat> the opportunities for the digital EA story lie within these four themes in these buckets. 
simplicity because it layers the information so a person can review at a very high level, or if they choose to, they can drill down into the details. Also, the information is viewable by discipline, by project component or activity, or by document focus, for example. Um, you create the architecture for the digital EA, and you, therefore, you create the simplicity. By using the visual tools, such as video or augmented reality, complex information can be broken down into more understandable pieces. Uh, informing stakeholders helps proponents work towards acquiring social license and project acceptance, and linking the exchange of information and the consultation process helps manage the project records to meet re regulatory and permit consultation requirements. Next slide, please. The opportunities during physical distancing and restricted gatherings. The digital EA story can be presented during virtual open houses or stakeholder meetings using any number of meeting software applications such as WebEx or Zoom. One can interact real time in Q&A with virtual open house within a virtual open house with services such as Slido or Mentimeter, for example. The digital EA integrates the public comment form. This allows for input during discrete engagement events or any time a stakeholder is reviewing project information. Uh, the technology exists to embed, embed live chat or chat bot, bots into the digital platform. And social media presence can be directed to your digital narrative to help manage the social media story. Next slide, please. Next steps. So in reality, we're, we're already there. Um, uh, and you can click through some of these animations. Storytelling with um, drones, with engineering drawings, visualization and augmented reality. Um, uh, if you can click through, next slide, you'll see some of these examples of the visualization and engineering drawings. So I've spent a good deal of time talking about the technology behind it and how this can help us safely overcome the challenges imposed by so physical distancing. Now I will hand the floor to Nick to speak a little bit about the technology behind the digital EA and the science of where. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining us. The backbone of our digital EA is made possible as we take advantage of what we like to call in the geomatics world as a science of where, with a focus of Internet of Things. So by harnessing the power of geographic information systems, remote sensing, spatial data management, and web applications, we have the power to create links that foster and promote visual, visual digital communication, such as our digital EA, between internal teams and departments, stakeholders, government, subconsultants, and the public. As seen in this slide, uh, the schematics can be complex and all-encompassing, but as experts, we drive you towards that web, GIS, digital EA, and digital experience section, as you can see in the slides near the bottom middle, in order to support and deliver your vision without you having to worry about the rest of the systems around there. Next slide, please. With the changing world and changing technologies, the hope is to create and to continue to progress the way we use technologies to communicate, to cope with physical distancing and to connect and help each other to consume the most relevant information. We can use the power of digital solutions such as web mapping, real-time dashboards, digital EA platforms, digital field forms, and in essence, a digital experience that supports past, current, and future projects and initiatives. Now, if you look at the digital experience pattern of use slide, it highlights a typical workflow that is in reality, a multi-directional and ideally organic 
So I'll pause just for a second. Um, so you can take a quick look at this because there's a few buckets in there uh, before I move on. Next slide, please. So I'm sure most of us have seen a version of the information presented on this slide. As we move ahead with challenges in our environment that grips our lives, the power of information, that visual interpretation, helps us better understand and better communicate those challenges. We have a team of highly skilled professionals that can focus on these digital platforms to create versatile and progressive digital tools and solutions as we see with a digital EA. Next slide, please. So with renewed focus by CAD and GIS software leaders, architecture, engineering, and construction workflows better integrate, receiving a much needed re-evaluation of these systems, which better supports versatile digital solutions, creating a reinvigoration of sorts as spatial data management systems work in unison. BIM models can essentially be dragged and dropped between two systems uh, and utilized in the, in the IoT uh, as digital experiences, which therefore can be better integrated into singular digital hub, hubs, which support and strengthen engineering and environmental teams, resulting in progressive ways to share our message and information digitally to proponents. As Norma showed in her opportunities slide regarding um, the 3D renderings. As we continue to take advantage of digital applications using the science of where, as well as, as our technical experts, we continue to strive as an organization with a hope to be leaders and to contribute in a positive way in the space. Our hope is to bridge that gap, not only during times of physical distancing, but as a long-term viable solution or alternative. Now, hopefully this has somehow come full circle and uh, to move forward and away from this bit of a high level overview of digital solutions. I'm gonna pass it back to Norma as she will touch on next steps for digital environmental assessments. Thanks, Nick, for, for trying to uh, simplify the technology behind this for, for us that uh, aren't technically so savvy. Uh, the next step for digital EA, this could in fact be the new normal, even after physical distancing restrictions are lifted. As I said, it'll take a while for the public to feel more comfortable and some of remote communities simply might not get there for a very, very long time. We may see digital representations for other regulatory documents uh, because the, the platform is so versatile, you could see it use, you could, you could use it for a project description in terms of reference, uh, baseline survey results um, it takes the complicated and breaks it down to the viewer. This platform works well for Indigenous consultation. It can be used for financial or corporate uh, stakeholders. For the owners of the digital narrative can be proponents, regulators or institutions. Will it replace um, a PDF and paper submissions, not for a long time, and this will be really a, a driven by regulators and, and government decisions. Um, uh, the next step, it, uh, also the next steps will rely on the speed of uh, adoption, will rely on um, strong fiber optic infrastructure um, because of the bandwidth that will be required to stream the information in the digital EA. Well, um, that's, comes to our close, our presentation, and thank you for your time and attention, um, and look forward to the Q&A discussion and hand the floor back to Scott. And uh, please do reach out if you have any questions too um, after the presentation. And, and, uh, Scott? Thanks, Norma. <clears throat> yeah, thanks very much, and, and welcome uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is the, the, the Q&A um, portion of, of the discussion, and uh, in using WebEx, unfortunately, WebEx is a is a one way is a one way um, uh, verbal communication tool. So um, the Q and A is is our is our way of of engaging with you this morning. So um, on the right hand side of the screen, there should be a, a Q and A bar for you. And if you don't see that, 
then uh, scroll towards the middle bottom of your page, you'll see um, a series of, of icons. And one of them with a question mark is, is the Q&A. And if you click on that, you'll see a, a, question, a question box come up and that's where you can type your questions. Uh, please do that and, and uh, I, will, I will read them out to uh, Norma and Nick. Um, so while we wait for that to happen, uh, there is a lot of material in this presentation to unpack. I know I've, I've been involved in, in the development of the Digital EA um, platform over the last, uh, the last couple of years. And it's, there's, I know firsthand just how much, uh, how much information there is. So it's a lot to, it's a lot to take in. Um, while we wait, I'll just remind the audience that uh, Norma Powell is our Director for Environmental Impact Assessment at Hemera, and Nick leads our geomatics practice in addition, at Hemera, we have a, a deep and experienced uh, human environment team, and they specialize in consultation, community, and First Nations engagement. Uh, and together, these groups have collaborated to design, build, uh, test this digital solution platform uh, that is, is really providing a, a new way of engaging with stakeholders. And so it really is more than, more than public consultation. It's, it's a way of engaging with stakeholders. And, li and like, we, like Norma pointed out, um, those th that can be your uh, those can be your shareholders. They can be your 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 board of directors. It can be your management team. It can be the public. It can be regulators. It, there really is a um, no limit to the to the amount of of groups of people that you can engage with with this platform. So, first question that's come in. Thanks very much, um, Norma. There were some there were um, uh, there were some screen video screen grabs um, uh, on here and, and I and the it sounds like the question is around um, is around yeah I guess it looked like there was video that you would have normally been playing um, and is there an issue with with um, with bandwidth and high speed connectivity for hosting um, hosting a, a platform like this and and it, is that a limiting factor um, if uh, for, for clients to, to use this platform. Thanks, Scott. Uh, yes and, and no. So it, it will require some uh, high speed connectivity and uh, but it, it wasn't presented here simply because we uh, the, the WebEx wasn't the avenue to do so. If, if folks are interested in actually seeing the digital EA with all the bells and whistles, uh, we can set something up um, uh, at a later time that, that's convenient for, for everyone um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Just to add to that, um, perfect answer, Norma. The, the application as well allows you to um, create this duality where if you are at a low bandwidth, it, it substitutes um, the interactive components with a still picture that is uh, transferable transferable easier for low um, connectivity. So it has that ability to notice that you can't stream this, it's too much, and it gives you a kind of screen capture of what it's supposed to be. So it's pretty versatile, which is exciting. Okay, thanks both. Um, next question. So who, the question is, is about hosting the digital platform. Uh, who hosts the, who hosts the platform? Is it is it a Senko? Uh, is it is it the client? Uh, and is there a, a purchase of a license required to uh, for this hosting? I'm going to let Nick answer that question. <laughs> I think. I knew it. <laughs> yes. Um, all of the above. Uh, anyone can host it. We can host it. We can we can buy licenses. We have licenses to do all the work or we can support um, a stakeholder to do the same on their end and lead them to that point where it can even be a handoff where we host it, then we hand it off. So um, the options are, are essentially based on what the need is more than anything. So the answer is it depends on, it depends on the client need and, and the, the use of, of, of the tool. Um, there, are, there are a series of, of, of software packages um, bundled into this into this platform uh, Asenko has those licenses and we're able to we're able to provide those for our clients but a client uh, could 
self host if they if they were able to uh, get those licenses themselves. Is that, is that what I heard there, Nick? Yeah, that's correct. We actually have a few examples where we developed and created a pretty complex system, and then annoyingly we handed it over to the client and built it in their infrastructure, and it it worked really well and flawlessly. Okay. So there's a couple of I'm going to bundle a few questions here. Um, so the, the there's a question is about how how does this platform align with the the paperwork regulatory submissions? Um, so I guess it's a balance of is there is there still the requirement for for the paper submissions or is this digital platform uh, a um, a replacement for that? And um, Yeah, it, is this a, is this a, a tool for stakeholder engagement and stakeholder consultation um, as well that can make the paper more paperwork submission more understandable and and potentially uh, less less costly? As I see it, um, the the digital EA isn't at the stage where the acceptance would be a replacement to the um, paper submissions. I think it'll be. Uh, they'll be, they'll work hand in hand. So the digital EA breaks down the complicated and presents it in a more understandable form during the engagement process. There'll still be the requirement to submit to paper copies, uh, PDF copies and host those on regulator websites. Any changes would have to be really driven by regulators um, and having the buy-in that something like the digital EA, it, it may, you know, it may, maybe not that far off from it um, as we gain more acceptance. Um, there is the uh, the the idea of even creating more digital um, hyperlinks and digital contacts within the PDF is possible, and making a PDF um, submission more understandable. But right now, the answer is it, the, the digital EA. This platform and the digital narrative will work hand in hand with a paper submission. Okay, so this isn't this isn't a replacement for um, for uh, paper submissions. It, it's a companion and an additional tool, really, to to reach stakeholders in a different way than the uh, than the paper submission would be. Correct. Right. Okay. So the next question. That's a good segue. Um, there's a you know there across the the broad spectrum of of, of stakeholders that a, that a project would have um, there will be a wide range of digital literacy uh, for lack of a better way of saying it and so how do you um, how do you engage across that digital literacy spectrum to ensure that uh, a wide range of participants are are spoken to and engaged with even ones who, who are not particularly digitally savvy savvy. Yeah, good question. Um, I tried or I, I try I recognized that in the first platform that we built and we did try and include in sort of the welcome tab, a screen, um, an avenue that was a use this platform functionality. So a user who might not be digital digitally savvy would sort of finger swipe tap on this they would get instructions on how to use the platform um, because it is because it is um, functionally on an ipad you can really play with it and um, uh, interact with the information so the idea really is that you learn by doing um, and when it comes to getting input and those public comments again you can you can integrate sort of a how do I instructions? How do I actually submit this comment digitally? Right. So it may right. seem it may seem like there's a technology barrier, but uh, there's a there can be a bit of hand holding for those that are maybe not as digitally savvy as the average person. Right. Yeah, it sounds like you can customize you can customize it. Um, Customized to meet the needs of your audience, and and if that's a wide range a wide range of, of audience members and stakeholders, um, you'll be able to uh, you'll be able to provide different options to engage with people. Yes, you could even uh, embed a video instruction on 
how do you use this? How do I submit right. my comment? Right. Yeah, well said. Okay. Uh, there's a couple questions uh, around this, and so I'll, I'll again I'll bundle them together. It's 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 uh, regarding cost of, of 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 a tool like this, um, and so there's. There's, there's a, a question around: Is there is there a, a difference, a cost difference between uh, a digital EA platform and a traditional EA platform? Um, and then, you know, questions around the the cost of the digital platform um, decreasing uh, over time, um, as is as is typical for most or for many technology solutions. So, is the is the cost coming down? Um, and and is there a uh, you know, I think it's comparing you know traditional versus versus digital, which you've said that it it's not an either or. This is a companion, but really, what are the cost considerations of of a tool like this? This might take a bit of um, explanation from 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 me and also from input from Nick, so I can comment on um, the approach that I see is that. The investment upfront in, if you take it in the early stages of your public consultation, you're investing into, it might be a platform that does, that describes the project and then you take that information and you build on it. So it's an incremental cost. So there's the upfront cost. And then if you're building a project description and then you build your terms of reference on, on that so that the, the engagement process takes you through and then the end product might be the EA, a digital EA, that describes the outcomes of the EA and the regulatory process and the mitigation and such. And then you could take it all the way to construction as well. If you want to actually replace community newsletters to keep um, the community in uh, up to date and informed on what's the activities that are happening, you could create some sort of a construction platform on uh, to keep the, the community informed on the, the, pro the progress that you're that's underway for a project's construction. Um, and the so it's a, so if that answers the question, it's an incremental cost uh, as I see it. And because this replaces some of the other more traditional uh, features of public consultation, um, those costs are you know offset somewhat. And if there's uh, a functionality or, or need to take this out to uh, shareholders and investors, you can also use it this way. So the cost could be spread over some of your uh, uh, project considerations. And I, and I suppose there's a there's a, a there's a functional relationship to be to, uh, between cost and the complexity of the project and the complexity of the um, and the phase of the project and, and the just the complexity of of, of the situation is that uh, part of it as well? Yeah, it'll depend on the content that you're interested in putting into the um, uh, into the digital EA. Right. Yeah, so already. I mean, if modeling is done, you'll have those modeling results. Um, so it's just taking them and presenting them in a digital form. And as we spoke of with the um, the Internet of Things, uh, what that concept is is realistically it's components speaking to each other the internet speaking to each other so as we build especially bigger projects we've set up this organism that just talks to each other and feeds it into a digital ea and what i've seen in the past is it might be more complicated it might seem like it's gonna be more work but at the end of the day long term it's actually less work because we have the systems that connect and talk and produce what we want automatically as opposed to um, old ways of going and gathering information manually. Um, we have these links where we, we get others to gather that information and we connect it all together and create a platform around it. So uh, it might seem like an upfront cost, but over the long run, it usually we usually gain way more out of it, um, especially in the geomatics world where uh, data is really important to the functionality of what we build. And if we can get that data to do its own thing without us needing to touch it, we save time. Um, and the stakeholders can see things at real time rather than waiting and asking for, for information. They just get it and that's saving time and money. So um, if you ask me, I, I think it'll actually save time. And the longer we, we take different projects and uh, understand them, then 
we can build it quicker and save even more uh, time and, and energy on these projects. You raise a, a, a point there, Nick, that um, there is so much data being created in, in today's world and and projects have have so much data that that, that uh, gets created and gets it gets built for for a project. And often that data just it, it sits somewhere, sits on I was going to say sits on a shelf. It sits in, it sits in a hard drive or sits in the cloud somewhere. Uh, this platform is a is a vehicle for um, for using that data and or, or reusing that data and, and getting more value out of the data that that is already created for a project. So while there is a cost to it, um, you're um, you're uh, normalizing other costs and and re as, as you repurpose data that, that's already there um, and get get more value out of it. So this is a tool that's um, that's extracting more value out of existing sunk costs already. Definitely, and it does create a really uh, a better data management system uh, at the end of the day, as opposed to all these fragmented data sets. Uh, you have to combine them. You have to put. You have to direct them to one place, which is what we always want to do. Um, so we know where they are and then connect them. So well, well said, Scott. So I, I'm I'm not seeing any more questions coming in on the Q and A anymore. If you, if you do have a lingering one, please please submit it now. Um, but as we as we uh, as we looks like we're we're coming to a close right right about on time. Um, Norma and Nick, I know you're you are available um, for for follow up questions with uh, with any of any of the audience members. Um, so, audience members, if you would like a a, a demo, a, a live demo of of this of this tool and this platform, um, or if you'd like more information. Uh, Norma and Nick are, are your sources of that at, at, at uh, Asenko, and would be pleased to would be pleased to talk one on one with you. And I think um, the uh, the contact don't have your contact information there. Is there one more slide to advance that uh, we can get the the contact information for for Norma and Nick? We're Perhaps. testing people. See how. Uh... How much they really want that information if they can find our content. <laughs> info. Uh, I know. I know that. Uh, I know that there was. Uh, there, there is a slide on that. So. So hopefully that that will come up. Um, also, this the the webinar was recorded, and as I said, uh, it will be posted on Asenko's website and uh, and LinkedIn and other social media channels. So uh, encourage uh, people to go back and rewatch it and and share that with your colleagues as you as you see fit. But certainly um, um, reaching out to 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 us for more information is, is another way of getting that. Um, so no more questions coming in. I'd like to thank Norma and Nick for, for sharing um, this information with us this morning. And thank you to all of the audience members. I know we had we had a quite a large quite a large group of participants this morning. So um, uh, obviously this subject is is top of mind for, for many for many people in the industry. Um, and it doesn't look like the that slide is going to come up. So um, Norma and Nick can be can be reached via uh, information on contact can be found through through the Asenko and the Hamera websites. And I'd encourage people to to go find that. Um, and with that, thank you very much to everybody for joining today. This will close uh, today's uh, today's Asenko Connect webinar, and we look forward to uh, speaking with you at the next time. Thank you very much, and have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.